Hi, my name is Kiara Pichardo. I play Nicole on School Spirits, streaming now on Paramount Plus, and you're watching The Bastion Show. You know what? Cue my reel. How much is this? $30. Are you serious? Yes. There is a CVS down the street. No, that's, that's fine. Um, I will take this. Of course, please. Is there anything else I can get you, ma'am? No, that's, that's all for today, ma'am. Stop. Yo, are you two fighting? You seem like you're fighting. We're fine. I didn't ask you, Sam. Sam, you're embarrassing me. How many days have you been doing the jobs that were assigned to you? 172 days now. Going on, guys, for the sixth episode of the Bastion Show, we have none other than the one and only Kiara Pachardo. What's going on, Kiara? Uh, nothing. Just got here, and um, <laughs> you know, excited. Let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. So, what can you tell us about your past that can shed light on who you are today? What as, can you tell as a person or in my career? Both. Okay. Um, I mean, I want to say as a person. Like... Let's let's start with the person. Okay. <laughs> I was born in Queens, but I moved to Lawrence when I was like five. So I say I grew up here. Um, you know, I was from a normal Hispanic household, going to church on Sunday, and yeah, and in, in, in school. And I was a good straight A student, not straight A. I got honor roll every everything. Um, and then when I got into high school, I realized I wanted to do something in the arts. And I told myself, and now. Well, all my friends told me too. They're like, oh yeah, you should do photography because I was always like editing photos. And remember MySpace when you used to put the little numbers on the side and mm -hmm. edit the pages and all extra. That's that's I would do all that for my friends. And when I got into high school, I got into photography, and I said I was gonna do that for the four years. I did film. I got into digital. Hey, okay, slow, let's slow, let's slow down a little. Let's slow down a little. Oh. A little, a little. <laughs> all right, so let's go to. That was a big question. It was. It was big. It was. Big. <laughs> so let's go to eighth grade, right? Okay. So if we were in the same room, we were in the same classroom i was a student attending the same year uh -huh. what kind of kid were you were you a introvert were you an extrovert were you artsy at that time i used to doodle a lot like on my papers i used to draw a lot so i would say it was a little artsy i love drawing i love like taking pictures i love editing stuff so you're always creative yeah to an extent yeah i liked writing um like poetry not like stories and but acting is not in your foresight yet though yeah no i had no I didn't do it in high school and I didn't do it in middle school. Okay, so let's move to high school. So you got into photography when you were in high school? Yep. I usually for the film classes, they let you in like sophomore year and up. But for some reason, I was a freshman and I got into a film class. And Mr. Travelo, shout out to, to you. KFA, hey, hey. Um, and yeah, so I really loved it. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. I kept doing it every year up until my senior year, I did AP. And I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. In college, like I'm gonna be a photographer. That's what I'm doing. Um, that same year, when I graduated high school, my mom got into a car accident, and so I was like, okay, it doesn't make sense for me to go to a four year. Like she kind of needs my help a little bit. So I went to Northern Essex. I took a few classes there, and I told myself, okay, I'm just gonna do like the what do you say the pre the pre yeah the prereqs like the math and the writing the stuff like that. And I was like, I'll do those, and then I'll transfer to mass art. Like that was my plan. That was the whole plan. That was my so, plan. I had a plan, okay? There was a solid plan in this. And then, you know, the way God is, and he changes things up and makes you laugh. Um, my cousin randomly one day was like, hey, come with me to these auditions. I don't want to audition by myself. And I was like, no, why am I going to go to that? Like, So she just randomly came Yeah, because she wanted to do it. Oh, okay, so she, she wanted just, assistance. She just wanted me to be there, like sit with her until she can go on audition and then like ride with her back. And you know, Northern Essex, they have the Haverhill campus in the Lawrence. Yep, yep. So me, you know, saving gas, they out here, here's the struggle. Uh, I, I would park my car in Lawrence and I would go to the Haverhill classes. So I had already missed my bus and the auditions were like late at night. It was like six, 7 p.m. 
And we're, we're sitting in the auditorium. I'm just there keeping in company. Erica, shout out to Erica Tate. Um, you know, and I'm like, okay, she's just going to do this real quick, and then we'll take the next next bus out. Like, ne- sorry, next bus, bus. out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're sitting there, and the director's like, okay, everyone sitting in the auditorium has to audition or they have to leave. And I was like... So, all right, let's stop there. What, what were you feeling at that time? Did anxiety hit? No, because like, I was like, what? I was like, why? Like, I I knew nothing about acting. I think I did, I think I did one acting class in high school, but it was because I had already taken all the other electives. Mm-hmm. I had already taken ceramics and art and photography, like all the classes you can possibly take. Mm-hmm. And acting was the last one, and I, I had no other choice. Um, but so in college, I hadn't done anything of acting. It was all photography classes and the pre ones so I can get into mass art type thing. That was my plan. So I'm in this auditorium room, auditorium room, and I'm looking at Erica. I was like, Erica, I'm, I'm not gonna audition for this. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, I'm, you know, I, I, I've never done it before. I was like, I wasn't a shy kid, but I've never done it. So I was like, I'm not gonna be good at that. And then, so when he said that, nobody's in the hallways. It's late at night. And then I was like, well, F it. So whatever. I don't want to sit out in the hall by myself. No one's there. Like, I already missed the bus. Like, what am I going to do? So so did they give you a script? Yeah. So it was like a coldery type of audition. They gave us all scripts. Mm-hmm. They paired us up. And then we had, like, five minutes to, like, go over. We didn't have to memorize it or anything. But, like, we, like, went on stage and we kind of acted it out with the script in our hand. Mm-hmm. And so they paired me up with the kid. I did it. My cousin did it too. I forgot who they paired her up with. And that was that. So we waited for the bus. We went home. Next day, it's like in the movies. You know when they go? They, when they go and they look in the paper and they're like looking for their name. So she goes up to look at it. And I'm a little more behind because I didn't care about this. And I'm like on my phone. And she's like, what? Started yelling. And I was like, oh, what happened? She's like, I didn't get a part. I was like, oh, my bad. This is like, but you did. And I was like. What? Do you think she said it pettily though? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. She meant it more like, oh man, like that type of thing. And I was like, okay, so like, what do I do now? Like, I didn't know. I didn't know what to do. And Stephanie, you met Stephanie, my yep. best friend. Mm-hmm. I met her at that audition and she's like, oh, now you have to like, if you want it, you have to go to rehearsals. And I was like, when? And she's like, oh, every day. I was like, I can't do that. I work. <laughs> And then they gave me like two days to decide. And then I said, yeah. And then I did a play and then that's it. I loved it. And then I kept doing more plays and then I switched my major. That was a long story. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So at this time, you're not thinking about photography at all. You know, I, I mean, I thought to myself, I was like, all right, like I know how to do photography. I know I'm like, okay at it. Like I could probably do this for a living or try to anyway, like try to get a job in that. I was like, or should I leave and do this thing I've never done before, but I really love. I just found it. Um, and yeah, I sort of just took a risk and I was like, all right, let me just keep going this way. It feels nice. It feels right. Did acting so give you the same feeling that photography gave you or did it give you a better feeling? It was a different feeling because with photography, I didn't really get adrenaline. You know what I mean? You're, mm. it, I was comfortable at it. I practiced it enough where I was like, that I, I really enjoyed it. You know, the people who are like so comfortable in their type of work because they've done it for a few, you know, it was like that. So acting was very different, especially plays. Cause it's not like on a set, they you can't yell cut. You gotta keep going, it's a moving trick. <laughs> sure. And that was a different type of adrenaline. You don't get that in a lot of places. Okay, so what was your biggest role, right? The first role that, that broke you out into the industry that people seen and were like, I need her to come back again. In, in theater? Or like, because listen, I just got- You gotta, you gotta explain the difference because I, I don't know. Okay. You gotta talk to us like five year olds. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm broken out yet. I'm on a show. I'd say you're broken out. Okay, well I didn't say, okay, I would say this, <laughs> the, the one I have right now, which is School Spirit. Mm-hmm. So you but think I, that's your- That's, that's the, my biggest job right now, like that, that today. No, but what I'm asking is more like, there had to be things that you did incrementally. That got people to, talking? Yeah, incrementally to getting okay. there, right? So like, what was what was the role that you had that, that showed the people that are doing school spirits that you had promised? Like, they they, they had to have- Why? Well, I don't even know. I feel like that's a question for them. I should like, <laughs> I should text them. 
<laughs> one of the writers. So I know you did the Dunkin' Donuts uh, yeah, commercial. Yeah. That was oh well, global, right? In, in the callback for School Spirits, they did mention the society. But I wasn't in the society. Like, you, if you've seen it, you know what I'm saying. I've seen it. Yeah, you had you had a couple of a, a apparel couple, studio. You, you know the you know the game the whack a mole. Oh, oh, that was me in the show. Yeah, she came into like I seen her on one episode. I think it was episode four or something. And then I hit her up. I was like, "Yo, I just seen you on Netflix." Yeah, yeah, but it's not as much as this one. But they did mention that one. It's crazy because you're an active, like actor, and like throughout the whole show. Like I watched episode one, and you were there for the society. For this? No, 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 not for, not for the society for school spirits. Yeah. Like, you're active. Like, you're actually... Yeah, compared no. to the other things I've done, yes. <laughs> you're part of the main cast. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you say it was the, the, the Dunkin' Donuts commercial that gave you your first breakout, to an extent. For me, personally, like, in an actor's world, it, that was, like, my biggest commercial. So I would say that was the biggest one for commercial. Mm -hmm. For theater, I did a show in the Huntington Theater. I don't know if you've heard of the Huntington it's like the Broadway of Boston. It's really hard to get in. I don't even know how I got into it. By the grace of God. That's how, that's how I got in. <laughs> um, and it was my first audition outside of college, too. I don't even... Lisa Tommy, shout out to her. She's a phenomenal um, director. But she she cast me in that. So that was my biggest play, which was Top Girls at Huntington. I would say my biggest commercial was Duncan. And then my biggest television is School Spirits. School Spirits. Yeah. Okay. So say somebody who's watching today mm -hmm. wants to get into acting, right? They're brand new, because actually I told a couple people before I got here, like, yo, I'm going to be interviewing Kiara. She's an actor. And he was like, yo, ask her how to get into acting, because I want to be an actor too. I'm like, bro, how you acted? Nah, but I think I could be good. I'm like, hey, man. I mean, hey. I was like, hey, man, but <laughs> I know a lot of people take acting courses. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to, like, just go through the whole motion. So for somebody who's watching and wants to get into it, tell us the steps from the beginning. All right. The step. Because not everybody's a natural like you, right? Not even I'm not a, listen, I took classes. No, but I, you, I still take classes here and there. But you picked it up though. The first, since your first audition, not everybody gets that, that lucky. I, I, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess a little fortunate, but I still took a lot of like classes in college. If you're in a college, okay, I'll say it from a student standpoint, or if you're not a student, if you're a student, do the plays, like take all the acting classes you can take any improv, improv is awesome. Um, getting involved with it, like like I said, the theater shows, and any way you can too. Um, also internships. If you can intern at casting companies, you can learn so much there. I interned at one, um, in order to graduate at Fitchburg State, and I learned so much there. Um, if you're not a student, I would say again, acting classes like at Boston Casting, CP Casting, Slate Casting, all these offer um, great classes. Also, there's a lot of universities like Emerson, BU, they all do student films. And it's a nice way for you to build a reel, which reels are like little, a compilation of little snippets of work that you've done. Portfolio. Yeah, in a way, your portfolio. It's just a video, no longer than like two minutes. And it's like little snippets of little short films that you've done or made, like bigger films if you happen to be fortunate to book something in Boston because they're always shooting movies, TV shows, everything. But how do they reach out? Do they email? So oh, do they just call? I know it's a whole process. So once you feel comfortable in front of camera, you know, you know, you well, there's different ones. So like Boston Casting, they have a, a database where you can make a free profile. You can put two photos, and I say free, non-active, because some people think you have to pay for it. You don't. Know, the paying per version is just like a marketing tool because you can send your profile to people. But I did the free version, and I I got auditions fine. So you put up your two photos, a little resume, try to do extra work. I did a lot of extra work. Extra work is like the background. The background for you. Yeah, you don't stop, <laughs> but you know, you see them faith eating or something. I did a bunch of those. Um, and it's just a nice way to like learn what it's like to be on a real set, a real professional set. Learn like etiquette, actors etiquette, mm -hmm. set etiquette, you know, and just seeing how they work. Like you learn a lot just by observing. Um, what else can I say? Just like... Okay. Also, you could like you could even cold email. I want to very delicately. I'm going to say this: you can cold email people sometimes. Just always remember to keep it short and sweet. And when I say people, I mean like casting directors. Casting companies are the ones that hold the audition. You don't need an agent to get auditions, but it helps. So if you just want to go the casting director's route, you could always shoot them an email with your headshot, your resume, a quick little bio. 
like, hi, my name is X, Y, and Z. I'm a Latina and a local actor. I speak Spanish. If you have anything I may fit, uh, I'm more than happy to put myself on camera for you. Okay. Keep it short and sweet, and half the time they'll respond. If you, great look, if you look like you could be bookable, they'll reach out with auditions. Also, like I said, the profile. When you make the profile, they'll send out sometimes like flyers. Of uh, you see me post. Of course. Right, right. Yeah, what they need like this big buff guy <laughs> and it pays a thousand a day or something. Like they're always posting those out mm -hmm. there. And also like CP casting, all the other companies, you could sign up for their email list and they're always sending out like castings through there. Okay. And the agency route. If you want help getting like auditions, if you're not familiar with too many of the casting directors, there's model clubbing, there's Maggie Inc., there's WSM talent. There and that Andrew Wilson agency and that would be just cold calling or emailing. So that on, on their websites, they all have different like procedures on how you submit. And if you get hit back up, you meet up with them and then see if you get signed. But you don't need an agent to get jobs. It's just easy. So there's a huge stigma on like the way an actor should look. A lot of individuals think that you have to be perfect. Like you have to be skinny. Mm -hmm. You have to have the best looking hair. No creases on your skin. No acne. Is that true? That is. That is not true. That is not true. I'm looking at it. Like, you know, I'm a tick girl. I'm short. Uh, I also have acne. I can freak for a little pimple right here. Um, no, it's not. I think it's all about like what they're looking for in character. And I actually think this is the perfect time because everything's all about inclusion. They're trying to put all the body types, especially in like modeling. If you notice on the runways, they're seeing thicker girls now. Mm -hmm. On the bulletins, like for you know, like Victoria's Secret, you're seeing thicker, curvier girls because that's just what's real. So I think it's actually the best time for people like us who are a little different in size or shape or facial or, you know, for us to go it. It's a very good time. So you yeah. say the industry is more authentic in this moment? I think it's it's a lot more accepting. Accept? I don't know what I'm You know, because there's all... The thing is, there's a lot of types... There's a lot of different types of people. But I think that's like that in any job, you know? Mm -hmm. On Wall Street, if you work at Forever 21, I don't know, like this, you get, you got different kind of people you work with. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing in the industry, but I think it's become a lot more accepting um, of different kinds of people. Okay. So let's tap into your mindset a little bit, right? <laughs> what kind of mindset, <laughs> what, can, what kind of mindset does an actor have to truly have when you're going on stage before you go? Like, I mean, I, I how do you have to think? I, I was gonna say, I can't speak for every actor, yeah. but I can speak for me. Um, when I go on a stage, I think it's a lot different than than on screen, but when I go on a stage, I remember I used, there was a, a phrase I used to tell myself, and it's funny, because the last few plays I did, I ended up having to be the one to open. It just so happened that my character was, and when you open, it means like you're the first character to go out on stage and be on the top of the show. And I remember every time that happened, I would be in the back, like behind the curtain thing, and I would tell myself, it's not that serious. It's not that serious. It's not that serious. And then that would calm me down for some reason. Mm -hmm. And that would help me when I had to go out on stage. I also did this thing to, this might be a little weird. We're being authentic, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, in theater, I did this thing where before the show, like two hours prior to the show, I would go and lay down on the stage and like do breathing exercises. I don't know. I, I, is that like a Dominican superstition? No, no, I don't even know where it got it. It's just like when I had a lot of anxiety. <laughs> that was a joke. Man. <laughs> I think it's a literal. No, like, I did. So you're like, no, not at all. No, we're bad. <laughs> no, no. It, I don't even, I didn't learn it anywhere. I think it was just like on nights that I had a lot of anxiety about or just like a little more nerves than I'm used to. Um, especially when I had like the main roles. Cause when I first started doing theater, it was like supporting roles, you know? But then I went into like being some of the leads and it's a lot of stuff to memorize. And it, pressure too, right? Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of like, you know, if they don't laugh at a joke, <laughs> you're like, dang, that was a fun. <laughs> I thought it was funny rehearsal. Um, so in order to calm those, I, I would sometimes like a few hours prior, I would go and lay down on the stage and just like, I don't know, be one with the space and that helped a lot but for a screen mm -hmm. you're talking about like mm -hmm. like tv film for me i think it's just i've learned recent recently i want to say in the last few years it's just all about like being yourself that's what the authentic thing comes because the thing is people smell like 
you know, they smell a poser when they're there. You know what I'm saying? You could see a poser from a mile away. Mm-hmm. Or someone that's like trying to be your friend because you have this many followers or trying to be your friend because they think you can get them an audition or, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I think just really being yourself and being kind. Um, that's my mindset when I go on a, on a job. Just mm-hmm. be nice. <laughs> do you think anybody can be an actor though? Like, do you think any regular Joe Schmo can become an actor? I think Or so. do you have to be born nope. with it? Nope, nope, nope. Really? I, I think, I think if you have enough passion, if you're not doing it because you want to be famous, because there's a lot of them. A successful actor. So let's, let's switch. Okay, okay. A successful actor. So now somebody who's acting in plays here and there, like somebody who, you know, gets the shot at the big street, on the big street. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think God has a plan for everybody. I think that's true. I think the story is written. But I, I, I don't know. I just think if you have a, a passion for it, a big enough passion for it, and you just keep going, like I think hard work always pays off. As long as you try to stay positive and look at it, the cup half full rather than half empty, you know, and just like I said, putting out kindness and just being grateful. Grateful is a really big one, I think. And, and generous, like generosity and gratefulness, I think it just curates like good things. I don't know if that makes sense. It's just trying to be the best he can be and mm-hmm. just keep working at it. Like, don't stop. No matter how many people say, oh, how are you going to do it? It's so hard and, and you're not famous yet. Oh, you don't have a job. You're still doing auditions. No, it, it's going to happen. Just keep working at it. Just keep, keep working, working at it. Ignore it. it. Ignore the outside noise. Yeah, because they don't know. They don't know. And the more you learn about the craft, you realize that a lot of people don't know how the industry works. You know what I mean? And so, like, it, there was an interview I saw once of Jay-Z. You probably see I'm sure everybody's seen. But it's like Jay-Z was like, oh, I had an uncle who told me I'll never sell a million records. And he's like, I sold a million records. records like, a million yeah. times, yep. And it's like, <laughs> and he said it. He's like, I couldn't be mad at him. Look, I'm getting goosebumps. I couldn't be mad at him. If he, he, he didn't know, he doesn't know about it. He doesn't, he's, he was too scared to go for his dreams. He was too, you know? So it's like kind of just having that mindset of like, they don't know, but, and it's okay. You don't have to bash them or be upset. Just, just keep going quietly. Ain't nobody got to know all your moves. Mm-hmm. And nobody. And yeah, 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 yeah. No, ain't nobody got to know all your moves. You tell them when it's already out. That's it. And nobody knows what's meant for you but you. It's your job to convince people. People aren't just going to support you just because you're yeah. Kiara or just because you're Michael. You know what yeah. I mean? So you got to, like, put in the work and convince other individuals to follow. Well, I don't do it to convince. I'm, a, I'm not saying you do it to convince, but I'm saying... People, I let, you let the work speak for you. Yeah, but the work is going to be what convinces them, right? Yeah, but that's not me. There's the work. You yeah, got to do nothing out of the work. work. You should work hard. <laughs> work hard, right? You work hard, right? But your work is what convinces the individuals right. who are watching. A lot of people, they, they think that, oh, I have 30 friends, 40 friends, and they're just going to support me because I'm me. And that's just not the reality. Yeah. I mean, that might not be the reality for That might be the reality for you or somebody else. But for me, I know it wasn't, right? Yeah. When you started, did everybody support you? Absolutely not. And that's, <laughs> but, then, but then once they saw that you were driven, yeah. Yeah. Once they saw that you put in the work, then you're like, damn. Yeah, once we started this. seeing things on TV or like, oh, you got paid for that? And then they're like, oh, okay, okay. But, but it took a few years. But also the consistency, though. When somebody yeah. sees you consistently going at what yeah. you're doing, they're going to be like, yo, she's serious. Now I could possibly hop on and support. Yeah. That's kind of how it works. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but make sure she's not about to ask. It's one of my favorite questions because I feel like it gives the most value to the people listening. And the question is, what was the greatest failure? And when I ask this question again, it's not what was the biggest L as in loss. It's what was the biggest L as in lesson. So what was the greatest failure? Oh my gosh, that's a deep question. Uh, what was my biggest failure as a loss? Oh gosh. Hey, no hell. Yeah, no, that's a good one. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Let's talk about um, it. Oh man, it wasn't, it, yeah, like you said, it wasn't a failure, but it was a loss. I remember, so I was on the society, like you mm-hmm. said, a whack-a-mole, right? Mm-hmm. And when it came time that season two was going to start filming, mm-hmm. I remember the casting, one of the casting, I mean, I don't know, I, I, mean, I could say it now, but it's not coming out, but <laughs> one of the casting directors <laughs> hit me up, she's like, oh, yeah, like, you know, I'm really good, like good relationship with her. She was like, hey, it's looking good for season two. Like you have like big chunks and like, you know, this this was gonna be like the biggest I had done yet. And I was like, 
oh, I'm so excited. Like, this is going to be great. They, the producers emailed me. They're like, hey, we're going to start filming. What's your schedule like? Um, here, you know, are you free this month to this month? I was like, yeah. And they, they even sent me out, I think, my first week, like, of what it was supposed to look like. I was supposed to start, I think, in April 2020. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, I was so excited. <laughs> I had this dog <laughs> under my belt. It was great. I was like, ooh, this is great. And then the pandemic happened. Mm. Heck. And this was March, what, March 16, I think. And they emailed all of us. They're like, hey, you know, this all this craziness happening in the world. But don't worry, we're still going to shoot this thing. We're going to see what's happening. And because I don't know if you guys know, but movies shut down for like two months. I didn't which know that. in industry world for movies, that's very expensive. Mm -hmm. And it shut down, you know, but they they were very adamant that we still had us like we were still going to film. I still had a job. I was like, great. In the summer, I bought a 2020 car. It was 2020. I was like, Ooh. but not to show off. I had a, I had a 2002 MDX that kept breaking down on me, so it, it was time. But I was like, oh, I'll be able to pay this off, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm, I have this, I have this big now. chunk, and, and so yeah, yeah, you know. So I bought that car. I think in like July, and then in August, I get a text from my manager, and he's like, hey, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, oh, sorry about what? What are you talking about? <laughs> He's like, oh, you didn't hear? Season two got canceled after they had already renewed it and after we were already had a schedule. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so crazy. I'm like, ma, I just got this car. It was like $500 a month, which, you know, to others may be a, you know, a little bit, but for someone who had was waiting on the second season for a job, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was like, how am I gonna pay this? I'm gonna have to like go back to doing brand ambassador work for Metro PCS, like mm -hmm. all this stuff. I was like freaking out. And it's like, don't worry, Keanu, it'll work itself so out. Like it's fine. Like whatever. Um, in the pandemic, I found out about unemployment, which I didn't know that was a thing, and and that helped, thank God. But it all worked out for the greater good because I had started looking for God like a little bit before that, but it wasn't until 2020 that I really like took it serious and like actually got baptized and like had the time to do the classes. Cause back then with the season two, I was like, oh, well, I'm gonna start filming. So I'm not gonna even have time to come to church. And this is in my head, I would tell myself this. And then God was like, oh, what? Oh, you're gonna put that first to me? Oh, okay, sit down. <laughs> and that's what he did. And thank God he did. Cause I learned a lot about humbleness. I learned a lot about like Work is great, it's important, but it's not number one for me, God is. And it just put a lot of things into perspective and how things can change and like, just being grateful for what you got and like, don't rush into things. For example, the car, <laughs> assuming you got a job before it's even there. That was like a very good example of, you know, like um, jumping the gun or what's that? What are those sayings? Like when you like do something too soon or you spoke too soon, something like that. Jump in the gun. You yeah, it. jump in the gun. And that's what I did. But I learned a lot of lessons and I spent most of 2021 and like some of 2020, like painting murals at my church, talking to God about my job. I spent a good almost two years like, okay, God, like, you know, you know what I want to do? Like, what should we do? What should I be doing? Anything different? Like, as I'm like helping serve at this church that I started going to more because of the pandemic, because I was jobless, because, you know. So it all worked out, it was very full circle. What do you struggle with now? I think God is doing a pretty good job at like, you know, helping me out and every day I know he's there. I would say I could probably pray a little more. And, and Let's know. get, let's get deeper. Let's, more let's it, pray a little more. Let's get a little more vulnerable, deeper. Uh, what am I struggling with? <laughs> I, I just, oh my gosh, is this horrible? Your I don't boyfriend, know. your boyfriend said no, right? She's struggling more than that, bro. That's prayer, right? I think, I don't know. Like, God is good. Life is good. Or I don't know. Oh, oh, I, I don't have a job. <laughs> Technically, in season two, hopefully we get a season two. Listen, guys, tune in to Paramount Plus. <laughs> I watch School Spirits every Thursday. There's five episodes right now. Um, so we could hopefully get a season two and I, I could have a job. Okay, cool. So... <laughs> I'm kidding. No, tune in. It's a great show. 
It's very if you're into mystery and like the who done it uh -huh. type thing, it's like that. One of the producers is our executive producer is like I think he was the writer, also producer of Pretty Little Liars. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. it's just a lot of plot twists and, and twists and turns. It's just awesome. And Nate and Meg, they're also writers on it and a bunch of other cool producers who are awesome people. So just support if you can. I actually watched it. It's it's, it's actually really, really good. Yeah. So let's talk about it a little bit. What school? You're not just about? saying that because I'm on. No, no, no. I actually watched it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so let's talk about. Before we talk about school spirits, though, let's talk about like the life of an actor in regards to monetary benefits, so mm. payment, right? Like, is an actor waiting until they get their next gig? Listen. Is this is this yeah. too personal? Okay. So. No, no, no. It's it's that's literally what it is. So you're unless you're fortunate and you can like book a couple series regulars or leads in like films, like big films for like, mm -hmm. you know, big companies like Sony, Paramount, Netflix, these, these things. Um, th that's a way to pay bills. But if you're doing these little gigs, like, you know, day player or a few days on a movie or, and trying to get commercials, it's a little tough. That's, that's, that was my life for a little bit. It, I mean, it still is a little bit cause I'm still auditioning for stuff, but those little jobs, you know, they came in handy. <laughs> they came in handy. So school spirits, is that considered a big gig? Yeah. For me, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I mean you don't need to go too deep and specific into the numbers, but yeah, give us a range. Okay, about so like mm -hmm. series regular when you book like a TV show and you and you're a series regular, it can range from like I think it's like twenty thousand and up per episode. Series regular is what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. Twenty thousand. Wait, hold on. No, it ra it ranges. It ranges. It from ranges. 20, so like, mm -hmm. you, if you know, they, it gets negotiated. I I think it also depends on the budget. It also depends on the budget. Maybe also the network. I'm not sure how all this works. I'm just from what I've heard, it's like you know around twenty, and up. Like so, for example, the people from Friends, I think they get what do they get? Like a one million per episode. Mm -hmm. We're no, we're not the. <laughs> So twenty thousand and up. Yeah, but so, think about it. Listen, the that, more you make, the more taxes get taken. <laughs> so you know what bracket? Hurt? So someone who's in a series regular should be expecting around twenty thousand and up per episode. Per episode. Yeah. Oh, that's that's amazing. Yeah, that's before taxes. Okay. Yeah. And day player, so like the the smaller roles, it would be like a thousand a day, a thousand something a day. If you work three days or a week. It was like four thousand, mm -hmm. three thousand, but you like I never got those all the time. So if you if you would have taken my what I made in a year, mm -hmm. and taken what somebody else made in a year, let's say at like a clothing store, it was mm -hmm. probably the same. Wow. Except I had a little more time on my hands because the jobs were, you know, less days. But I also was like auditioning all the time, so I feel like that's worth too. Mm -hmm. You spend a couple of hours if you're doing like four or five auditions a week. How important are relationships in this industry, right? I know you go to auditions yourself. Like networking, you mean? Yeah, in regards very to networking. Important, I think. I also just think, you know, like very important in the sense of just like, if from a nice person perspective, not trying to be someone's friend or build a relationship just purely because you want something from them. Mm -hmm. Like really get to know people. Like some of these producers, some of these A-list actors are like, you know, directors, they're actually really cool. Like just as a person in itself, not just so much like, oh, what can they do for me? No, it's just like them as a person. Cause you can meet a director like has all the connections in the world and maybe he's not the nicest mm -hmm. or a producer, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So just because you have all these connections, this and that, I'm going to be super nice. I'll probably be nice anyway, but not in a way of like me trying to push the relationship to be like a friendship. You know what I mean? It's just cause it's more about that. It's not all about the connection. And that's what I realized. Like a lot of people. Sorry, connections that they have. Mm -hmm. It's all about the connections you make. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's what I realized too. Like a lot of people, they, they try to start relationships so it could be transactional, right? Right. I'm gonna get closer to you. I'm gonna talk to you more so I can gain from you. Yeah. Not more of like what I could pour into you. But what they don't realize is that the more you pour into somebody, the more you get back from Amen. just the energy. Yes. The more you give, God, the more you get. That's what it literally. The more you give, the more you get. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go deep into school spirits. So what is it about? Okay, School Spirits is about, uh, there's this high schooler, her name's Maddie. Maddie I play Nicole, yep. and then there's Simon. We're like a little trio of friend group. Mm -hmm. And Maddie all of a sudden disappears, and she ends up in this ghost afterlife, and that's where she had, there's a couple of ghosts, Wally, Rhonda, Nick, 
sorry, Nick is his real name, Charlie. <laughs> I always get confused. And Mr. Martin, then there's a couple of teachers like Mr. Anderson, uh, Maria D Diaz, she plays her Maddie's mom. A bunch of actors, they're trying to figure out, sorry, characters, trying to figure out what happened to Maddie. Mm -hmm. So somehow Simon can see her, but they don't know why. The afterlife people don't know why, and he hasn't told any of the living people. So we think he's just like going crazy or like, you know, just isolating himself because his friend is missing. But then it's like he can actually talk to her and they're trying to figure out what happened to her because she doesn't remember. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't even know why she's in this limbo of like an afterlife. And it's just all of us trying to figure out what happened to her and all these suspects. And there's all these secrets that are coming to surface. And I don't want to give away too much, but it's very interesting. You'll be on the edge of your seat. I promise. And it's streaming on Paramount Plus, right? On Paramount Plus, yeah. Strictly. I think there would be. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think it's playing on MTV too. Which was random. I just found that out like two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. How does it feel like to watch yourself like on the screen? Like, I know you did the acting. You were in the show. Right. right? It's different. It's different like, watching it than doing. Do you look at it from a different lens because you were there, or is it just like you're taking it for what it is? For you know, for some reason, I think for School Spirits, School Spirits is so different. Such a special project because it's the first project where I felt the most comfortable, like with everyone just being on the set. It felt very family oriented, which doesn't or hasn't happened for me before. Um, it felt like a, like a once in a lifetime thing, really. And so I wasn't too nervous. I wasn't too nervous on that one. And so watching it back, it just feels like how comfortable I was on set is how comfortable I am watching it. But previous things, oh my gosh, I would be like, why did I do that? Why didn't I do this like this? Oh, why did I put my face like that? It's, you know, we're our own worst critic. For sure. Sometimes, but it's, it's gotten a lot easier and just like accepting. <laughs> what doors has this opened up for you? What doors? Yeah, what doors? Um, oh, I got to go to Kids Choice Awards. Teens Choice Awards, I see yeah, that. Yeah, that was fun. I, I, I mean, I've never thought about going there, but actually when I was a kid, I liked it because of the slime. Mm -hmm. So when I used to watch it, I always wanted to get slime, but. Being older, you know, and you get a stylist, you don't want to ruin the clothes because they're not yours. <laughs> so you have to go to Teen Choice Awards, what else? Kids' Choice Awards and, I, well, we had the premiere. That's all I really did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was nice because actually that was my first premiere. Mm -hmm. That was my first premiere for me, like that, it, like I was the one walking. So it was very, it was a very nice moment and I got to share it like with my mom, my manager, my boyfriend, they were, they were all there taking pictures of me. <laughs> if you could be on one show, right, or one movie, right, what would be your dream movie or dream show to act in? Wow. The Office. Really? Yeah. I know, you mostly see me in dramas. I haven't been fortunate enough to book a comedy, but in theater, I only ever did comedy, so it's very odd. It's very hard to get into comedies in, like, the film world, but that's... That would be dope. Like a sitcom -y. I love sitcom. What steps would you have to take to get there? You know, I don't know. I'm figuring that out. <laughs> uh, I, if anybody sees this, <laughs> I know. I, I honestly, I don't know. It's just like auditioning. I've auditioned for a bunch of like comedic films and like TV shows and stuff, but I, I, I I've gotten like callbacks, but I, I've never gotten the booking. So. Okay. All in due time, though. I'm sure, you know, I, I pray about it. So God, you know. He'll deliver. You shall ask and you shall receive. Amen. Let's be a little transparent about how many auditions do a month, right? So for somebody coming into the game, that's like, yo, this is easy. I just got to do a couple of auditions a month and get some callbacks. <laughs> how many auditions um, do you have to do a month? And what is the return rate, right? Like, what is the tournament rate, if that's for lack of better words? I'm going to say in a year. How about that? Let's do it. Because every month it's like, it varies, you know? Some, mm -hmm. there's some seasons that is slower. Pilot season is like from January, I think, to like, I don't know if it's April or something. And that's really busy, but <sighs> since like, well, let's say 2018, 19. I wanna say I've done like, wanna say more than like 600. 600? Whoa. <laughs> More than 600? Yeah, because it's, it's not just main role ones, though. It's like the littler ones, too, and also commercial auditions. Like, it's a lot of auditioning. And what? then, like, in a year, I've been very fortunate because there was, 
there was one year where it was a little slower, but there was one year where I like booked, and this is a lot for someone in Boston, but like, let's say non-union commercials, it was like three, a national commercial, I booked Society, Smilf. So I booked like, you know, a good eight jobs. And for Boston, that's like, Thing. that's that's a lot. So somebody who's just coming in and thinking, ah, it's gonna be a walk in the park, they gotta actually not only work on acting yeah, by themselves, but they have to actually put in the work in regards to yeah. the audition. It's a lot of auditions. And it's a lot of no's before you hear a yes. And I think the mindset that, because in the beginning, I was like, you know, waiting by the phone, like, why haven't they called? Da, da, da. And then the, 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 the date comes when the shoot was supposed to happen. I'm like, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. And then I like beat myself. <laughs> but that's not the case. It's just like, you literally have to audition. After you audition, literally throw it away. Like, forget about it and focus on the next one. Audition, throw, uh, you finish that one, forget about it. Audition, forget about it. And then eventually you'll start, you know, booking the one or two, and then you even forget that <laughs> you auditioned for 15 that you didn't get. <laughs> you know, cup half full, not half empty. What keeps you going? Um, God, yeah, a lot of prayers. So you just lean, you lean into your faith yeah. every chance yeah. that you can. Yes, God, family, my mom. She was probably my number one supporter in all of this. No, is my number one supporter in all of this. Like, especially in those times, like, you know how we said, like, when you get those families or friends, they're like, what are you doing? You haven't even gotten any jobs. Like, how are you going to make a living? When you're just starting out, you're not actually getting it. Um, she was definitely like, keep going, keep going. Don't worry about it. Keep going. Just keep going. And know, Pedro, I'm at his house. I just so happened to be in his room. It was early in the morning, but I think I... The reason I was in his room was because like the, the his boys were running around in the living room. And I was just having like a moment with God, like I talking to him. And the lights were off, but there was a curtain in, in his room. There's like this curtain and there was like a sliver of light coming through. Mm -hmm. And so the sliver of light is like on my face, you know. And I started talking to God. And I was like, that God. It was been a few years. I'm getting older like to an age that like everybody else is like, has their masters, they have the job that they're gonna work in for the rest of their life or maybe. And I'm like, and I'm still here trying. And I'm like, and I really want this, you know how much I love this. Um, but it kind of seems like you don't, like maybe, maybe you don't want this for me. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, and I repeated it, even though I love it, mm -hmm. I'ma let it go. If you send me an audition, I'ma do it, but I'ma let it go and I'ma start looking for something else to do. Something else, if, if there's something else you want me to do. Mm -hmm. And I was crying, cry, bawling my eyes out as I was telling him that. And I was like, but I love it so much. I love it so much, God, you know what I love it. If you do give me it, and again, this is me letting it go, but if you do bring it to me, I promise to talk about you wherever I go. And then I cried out a little bit more, you know, and I thanked him for everything, and then I closed out that little prayer. And then like two or three weeks after I got this audition, I got the call back with all the producers. It was such a nice moment that my, my call back was through Zoom and I had goosebumps the entire time to the point that like everything was so nice. They're like, wow, you did such a great job. Who are you? I've never even like, where have you been? Like, you know, we've never seen you before. What else have you worked up? All this stuff, super nice. The, the direct Max, Nate, Meg, Oliver, and I was, you know, I talked, I, I was myself, I was nice, I, I did the scenes, I tried to do it how they wanted, and then mm -hmm. they're like, okay, well, thank you so much, um, you know, like, w we'll get back to you, for whatever. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I hung up, I remember dropping to my knees, crying my eyes out again. Crazy. Because it felt so divine. Mm -hmm. And I was like, God, I don't know if I'm getting this, but just that and the way they talked to me, the way they talked life into me, saying how great I was, because auditions aren't usually like that, where they're just talking about how great you are and all the pointing out the little things that were beautiful in the performance or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, even if I don't get it, like, thank you for even like letting me have that moment. But it felt like it felt, I don't even want to say like it felt like mine, but it just felt so divine and so right. And I remember texting my manager, I was like, I just finished this. This feels so right. I don't know if I'm getting it, but it feels so right. Mm -hmm. And then, and then after a couple more rounds of audition, I booked it, but. It That's was, crazy. It was, that's oh, insane. God. Nah, I, prize I, not structured. Just talk to me. I got stories for days as well, but that sounds pretty similar. 
Well, correct. <laughs> and now we need that, we need that, go. And at the end of the day, it's Bass and Drip, the flash in the city, aka the young intellectual. And Kiara Pichardi. We all. <laughs>